Good morning, everybody. Jim Hoffman here, pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church, and it is Friday. Time for our daily devotion, so I'm going to invite you to come and join me for our time together. Um, I would uh, hopefully you'll just come and, and spend a few moments with us. I'm going to wait for a couple minutes and just see who all joins today. As you do, if you want to leave a quick comment, let me know that you're present. That would be wonderful. Would love to know that you are here. Thank you to Allie for filling in yesterday. We were running around with Chloe and Matt and Brooke who are in town visiting. They're leaving tomorrow to go home to Ohio, so having fun with them today. Hi Stacy, good morning from you and Wyatt. How is Wyatt today? That he's as perfect as any little grandbaby can be. Because they're all perfect according to us grandparents. Hi Jack, hi Pat, good morning to both of you. We're going to be reading out of Joshua chapter 1. So if you want to find that, Joshua chapter 1 is where we'll be reading today. First nine verses. More Mr. Dunbar. Glad to have you here today. Brooke and Matt just got back. They ran over to... Um, Oklahoma Joe's, Joe's KC. Um, that's one of their favorite things to do while they are in Kansas City is to go to Joe's. That's probably one of their favorite barbecue places here in town. So they brought us back some lunch. So I'm going to have a burn in sandwich on a gluten free bun. Hi, Barbara. Good morning to you. Glad you're here today. Again, we're going to be reading out of Joshua chapter 1. Hi, Linda. Good morning to you. Yep. After nap time, we're going to go over to Loose Park. On the west side of the tennis courts is a splash pad. So one of Brooke's um, high school friends is coming over with her little girl, and we're going to take the two of them, uh, uh, take Chloe and, and the, her daughter, and go over there and let them play in the splash pad for a little bit. That'll be fun. Hi, Garth. Hi, Cherry. Good morning to you. Again, we're reading out of Joshua chapter 1. We were down at Crown Center yesterday. We took, uh, took her to Sea Life, and I had forgotten they have closed off all the fountains down at uh, Crown Center. They won't let anybody play in those anymore. So, Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 to 9. Let's read. Let's begin with our um, opening prayer. It is... O oh God, by your spoken word, you created everything that is. By your incarnate word, you redeemed us. By your comforting word, you are with us still. Prepare us now to, to hear your word to us this day. Amen. Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 to 9. After Moses, the Lord's servant, died, the Lord spoke to Joshua, Nun's son. He had been Moses' helper. My servant, Moses, is dead. Now get ready to cross over the Jordan with this entire people to the land that I am giving to the Israelites. I am giving you every place where you set foot, exactly as I promised Moses. Your territory will stretch from the desert and the Lebanon as far as the great Euphrates River, including all Hittite land up to the Mediterranean Sea on the west. No one will be able to stand up against you during your lifetime. I will be with you in the same way I was with Moses. I won't desert you or leave you, so be brave and strong, because you are the one who will help this people take possession of the land which I pledged to give to their ancestors. Be very brave and strong as you carefully obey all of the instruction that Moses my servant commanded you. 
Don't debate even a bit from it. Don't, excuse me, don't deviate even a bit from it, either to the right or to the left. Then you will have success wherever you go. Never stop speaking about this. Instruction scroll. Recite it day and night so you can carefully obey everything written in it. Then you will accomplish your objectives and you will succeed. I have commanded you to be brave and strong, haven't I? Don't be alarmed or terrified because the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. All right. Joshua chapter 1 verses 1 to 9. Our writer, writer today is Jordan S. Hiquit from Pennsylvania. Focus verses verse 9. The Lord said to Joshua, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And here is the daily devotion for today. My daily commute to work consists of a 25-minute drive one way on a rural two-lane road. Even though most days are trouble-free, problems seem as wildlife crossing the road. Problems such as wildlife crossing the road, downed trees, and flooded roadways are always possible. The biggest challenge is when winter brings a mess of snow, ice, and wind. On those days, I drive well under the speed limit as I carefully wait, make my way up and down the snow-covered hills. One day it occurred to me that my winter drive is similar to life. The icy roads and snowy hills are comparable to life's troubles. The death of a family member, the loss of a job, a devastating health diagnosis. Just as I don't know what lies ahead on my journey, as we travel through life we don't know what awaits us either. One thing we know for sure is this. Jesus says, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Jesus didn't promise an easy life, but he told us not to worry because no matter how hard our journey is, he has already won the fight. So when we find ourselves sliding along life's roadway, worrying about the future, we can find comfort and peace in knowing that Jesus is with us on the journey. Thought for the day is, I can take heart because Jesus is with me on my journey. So um, I had a couple of things I was thinking about um, in, in this devotion that kind of struck me. Uh, yesterday, Margaret had to leave to go to Dallas. She has market, Dallas market. Um, so several of her manufacturers and her customers are in Dallas for, for the market down there. And so she left yesterday. She was originally supposed to leave at 8 o'clock last night. But um, American Airlines, if you've been paying attention to the news, has canceled uh, several um, um, of their flights and, and time slots and things like that. So they moved her to a 540, which was no big deal. So we were calculating yesterday, okay, what time do we think we need to leave? Now, I remember the days when we used to be able to leave our house and, um, you know, let's say she had a five o'clock flight, we would leave at four o'clock. We'd be at the airport by 4.30 typically, and she'd have a half an hour to be able to use the outside. You know, typically she would use Southwest porters or, you know, the, the baggage guys, and they would take care of her bag, and then she'd just go straight to her gate. Not anymore. Not any more. No, no leaving, you know, an hour before the flight. Now it seems like we've got to leave about two hours before the flight to get up there. There's so much construction everywhere. Um, we wound up in construction, of course, trying to get through the plaza area because they've got that all messed up. Um, so we wound up in construction there. And then um, if you get up near... Um, uh, the the bend from 29 or going up 29 um, you know there's construction up there that we wound up sitting in so needless to say we got to the airport our requisite 30 minutes before her flight America's not southwest she had to go inside she had to get to a terminal she had to check in her bag something was wrong it wasn't responding it was really slow and needless to say she calls me and says, come back and get me. So I had to turn around. And in the meantime, I thought, well, you know, if, if that's the case, 
She was going out on American. I said, why don't you just check on a Southwest ticket? They had a Southwest ticket. She needed to be down there last night. Otherwise, she was going to have to leave at 6 o'clock in the morning this morning, which meant she was going to be up at 3.15 and I was going to be up at 4. No. So she took another flight out of South, uh, the Southwest flight last night, made it down to Dallas just fine, blah, 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 blah. So you think about some of the things that you come across in life that are just kind of roadblocks, unexpected. You know, the things that are going to delay you, impede you, um, they're going to create kind of a, a headache for you, right? Uh, several years ago, I mean, it's been seven years ago, I believe, when um, Brooke decided she wanted to go to college in um, Ohio, I drove her out there for college. Now, this was mid-semester, so it was January that I drove her out there. And that was the year we had that really bad ice storm that went all the way east across I-70. And it was like, you know, this much ice packed on the road all the way. I mean, that's the year that they had semis and cars just scattered on the sides of the road and stuff like that. We did 35 miles an hour going across there. That's a 750 mile trip at 35 miles an hour. It took us two really long days. We sat on the highway at, for periods of time and for almost three hours at one period of time just outside of Effingham, Illinois, waiting on a semi to get cleared because it jackknifed and blocked both the roads, both lanes of the road going eastbound. You know, we just have moments in life where it seems like some things will get in our way, right? We're going to find ourselves in some conditions that that we just wonder about. And yet the Lord says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will go with you wherever you will go. Jesus says in this world there is going to be trouble, but take heart. I have overcome it. And he promises to be with us no matter what. So I hope that every single one of us, no matter where you are today, whether you're experiencing some of the messiness of life or whether you're in the middle of experiencing some joyful times like, like I am today, spending time with my granddaughter and my daughter and son-in-law, I hope we'll take heart and be reminded that Jesus is with us on this journey. His comfort, his peace is something that we can know every single day if we'll just lean in on him and cling to his promises and his word. Let's take a moment to pause and pray. So gracious God, help us to remember that no matter how troubling life may be, in your son Jesus, you are always with us. And in the power of your spirit, we can overcome. So walk with us each and every day, and we pray this in your son's name, amen. Well, thanks everybody for being here today for our time of daily devotion. I appreciate all of you being here. For those of you that might come a little bit later, if you want to leave a comment and let me know that you were present as well, we'd appreciate you doing that. Take an opportunity maybe to share this on your own Facebook page as we close our devotion time. Otherwise, I will look forward to seeing you tomorrow at this time. Come and join me. And may God's grace and peace fill the rest of your Friday. May it be a joyous day for you. I'll see you tomorrow.